Listen, folks, the moment that one of you requested that I make a before you watch about Mushishi, I was good to go. I will never pass up an opportunity to talk about Gingo. Mushishi is an anime with two seasons and a special. The first season is 26 episodes long, and the second, Mushishi Zokusho, is 20 episodes long. It was adapted from a manga, has a very respectable reputation, and I am very excited to talk about it. But before I discuss the plot, I want to go over some important lore first, and the best way that I've ever heard it explained comes right from the anime itself, so I hope you don't mind me paraphrasing a bit. Take a look at my hand. Now, say these four fingers represent animals and my thumb represents plants. Man is here, furthest away from the heart, at the tip of the middle finger. And the lower you are on the hand, the more primitive you become. Now, if I go past my palm, you'll find that the veins all eventually converge around the wrist. That's where we find bacteria and microbes. Once you go farther than that, though, it's hard to distinguish what's there, because the veins become so intertwined that they all become indistinguishable. And there are things found much farther away from the wrist. Along the arm, past the shoulder, until finally you find Mushi, right at the heart. They are something like essences of life. And if that sounds like a vague explanation to you, well, you're not wrong. Sometimes Mushi are quite large and plant-like. Some more resemble bugs and some can even imitate humans and have conscious thought and some are... Uh, a lot of other things. And part of the fun of the anime is finding out all of those other things for yourself. As far as Mushi are concerned, there are a lot of complicated cases that sometimes end up affecting humans in very negative ways. And that is precisely why we need people like our protagonist, Ginkgo. Most people can't see Mushi, but some people can, and some of those people that can see them become specialists or Mushi masters, aka Mushishi. The main character, Ginko, spends his time as a Mushishi, traveling from one place to another and assisting people who get caught up in all sorts of Mushi-related phenomena. In essence, he's what you get when you fuse a paranormal investigator with a doctor. The anime tends to feel like an episodic mystery series, in how Ginko will come across a problem relating to Mushi and then the episode will revolve around him trying to solve it. Mushishi, in my humble opinion, is a masterpiece, but I don't think it's everyone's cup of tea. I remember I recommended this anime to someone who thoroughly enjoyed it, and then another person who got really bored by it. Which is perfectly okay, by the way. Everybody likes different anime, it's all good. But still, there is a lot to like about Mushishi. For starters, Ginko himself. An important aspect of Mushishi is that Ginko is not perfect. He cannot fix every situation, and things do not always go the way that he plans. But in moments like those, he picks himself up and moves on because that's just the way his job is at times. Right from the start of the series, you can tell that Ginko has been doing this for years now. He has seen a lot of things and has met lots of strange people. He handles every situation and every person differently. But above all of that, he shows favor to those who are genuine and will always do whatever he can to help keep them sane and alive. Even when their case is rare and he has no idea how to initially handle it because the amount of data people have on Mushi is sparse. And even when everyone around him is being extremely difficult. The amount of patience that Ginko has is unparalleled and it is never appreciated enough. But I digress. Mushishi not only does a great job in the storytelling department, the anime is extremely well produced and polished. The mystical soundtrack definitely plays a valuable part in that, as well as the background design and color palettes for the show. But another one of my most favorite things about Mushishi is the way it uses sound to assist its storytelling and atmosphere. For example, when there's snow on the ground, it covers the land and absorbs sound waves, making it seem quieter than it would be otherwise. You'll rarely hear anything aside from perhaps snow falling from the trees or the wind blowing by. I for one have always found that while I'm shoveling snow in the winter time, the loudest sound that I'll hear is the crackling snow under my feet. With that in mind, when Ginko walks outside on a snowy day, you'll rarely hear music play. You'll just hear his footsteps as he trudges through the snow the wind blowing by, and him talking to himself, which he does a lot. That is just one of the many cool ways that Mushishi uses sound. The anime is drowning in this almost meditative atmosphere, and in both the sad and heartwarming moments, it draws me in all the same. I always feel as though I've been teleported to another world when I watch it. 
and I only leave it when I press pause. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you're new, and remember my friends, you don't have to watch it, but if you do, see if you like it, and I'll see you next time. Bye!